In this example, we'll solve the problems 2, 118, 119, and 120 of our textbook row. We have a dampered single degrees of freedom system where M, C, and K are given. And we would like to determine the undamp and the damping natural frequency of vibration and the damping radio. I like to write first the equation of motion of the system, which we already have done in during the review of the theory, which is mass times acceleration plus the constant of the damper times the velocity plus the constant of the spring time the displacement. And that is equals to zero. Let's start with the first case where we have a mass of five kilograms, a damper of 500 newton seconds over meters and a spring of 5,000 newton over meter. The definition of natural frequency is equal to the square root of the constant of the spring divided by the mass. We plug in the numbers and we get that 5,000 over 5 square root give me a value of the natural frequency equals to 31.62 radians per second. The critical constant is defined as 2 square root of km. So let's plug in the numbers. That's 2 square root of 5,000 times 5. And that is equal to 316.22 newton seconds over meters. Now let's calculate the damping ratio, which as we recall is equals to the damping coefficient divided by the critical damping. And that critical damping is 2 square root of k of m, and we have already calculated that number, so that's equals to 500 divided by 316.22. Remember to keep up more decimals in your calculator, so to get more accurate values when you are using the numbers you already calculated to further calculate other values and that gives us a value greater than one. It means that our system is over damp. This system do not oscillate therefore we do not have a damped frequency of oscillation. This system's response was following equation. X as a function of time is equal to C1 exponential to S1t plus C2 exponential to S2, S2t. S1 and S2, as you know, are the roots of the characteristic equation. And please look into your formula sheet and your theory to find out the values of those constants. If we have a initial condition equals to the displacement 2 meters and the velocity equals 20 meters per second, we have this curve over here. This is 2 meters and the velocity over here. The velocity gives me the angle, how the curve starts, and this is 20 meters over second. With this type of combination between mass damping coefficient and springs constant, the system goes very slow to the equilibrium position. The next problem that we will solve will be this mass, 5 kilograms, damping 500 newton seconds over meter, and constant of the spring, 50,000 newtons over meter. Let's start by calculating our natural frequency, which is the square root of k over m, and then right now we have the k is 50,000 divided by 5, our mass, and that gives us a natural frequency of 100 radians over second. Our critical damping is 2 times square root of k times n, in this case k is 50,000 times our mass, which is 5, a critical damping coefficient of a thousand newton seconds over meter. 
our damping ratio is equals to the constant of the damper divided by the critical constant and we plug in the numbers and we get 500 divided by the number we just calculated which is 1000 and that gives me a damping ratio of 0 0.5 this number is less than 1 therefore we are in under damp system now we calculate the damp frequency of vibration and that's equals to omega n square root of 1 minus zeta square 86.60 radians over second now the system responds to the following equation x as a function of time is equals to uh, amplitude multiplied by an exponential 2 zeta omega n t times sine of omega d plus a phase angle. Remember that uh, the amplitude capital X depends upon the initial conditions and this equation is equals to square root of displacement square plus velocity plus displacement multiplied by zeta omega n all that divided by the damped frequency all that square and we are taking the square root of that the phase angle remember that if you take a single sign is different than to taking a simple cosine function and in the case that you take a simple sign you divide the coefficient a divided by b and you take the inverse tangent function this is the shape of the response in this graph here you see the initial position and the velocity and the graph as you see oscillates around the equilibrium position and it goes to the equilibrium position relative quickly because the damping coefficient is 0 0.5 which is relative high the last problem that we will study is with mass 5 kilograms coefficient of damping 1000 newton seconds per meter and constant of the spring 50,000 newtons over meter and we will calculate the natural frequency in this case is 50,000 over 5 give me equals to 100 radians over second the critical damping is equals to 2 km and that gives me equals to 1000 newtons second over meters we have our damping ratio over critical damping that's thousand over thousand and we get zeta equals to one this is what is called a critical damping system omega t is equals to omega n 1 minus zeta square and that's equals to 0 and then the response of the system is the function respect to time e to s1 t and both roots of the polynomial as you record are equal this for the second term is multiplied by t and then s1 that is equals to s2 is omega n and a was equals to initial displacements x and b velocity plus initial displacement omega n for the conditions of 
initial displacement 2 meters and initial velocity 20 meters per second, we have the following result, which this is the initial displacement, this is the initial velocity, and as you see, it goes very quickly to the equilibrium position. The critical dampness system is the one that gives the fastest way to return to the equilibrium position without oscillation. So it will not rebound, it will not oscillate around, it will just go straight to zero.